Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with yet another deck tech and carrying on we're looking at some of the commanders that Daybreak have programmed in from the new set, from the commander set itself that's not upgradable on MTGO, but you know what I mean. Look at my video from the other day, Sunday, if you want to see what I'm talking about. Um, we're going with this one today. We're going with one from Sultai and it's going to be Xavier Sal, Infested Captain. Um, black, green and blue for a 3-3 human fungus pirate. It's got nothing at all to do with Pirates of the Caribbean, this card. Nothing at all, just so we're clear. Um, legendary creature, human. Yep, fine, because Pirate. Yeah, I've been through that. Two very interesting abilities to make this one of the more unique Sultai commanders that I remember seeing over the last few years. The first one, remove a counter from another permanent you control, populate. You can only do the sorcery. And sacrifice another creature, proliferate. Only as a sorcery. Yeah, interesting. Um, I honestly don't remember seeing anything like this for a while. I love it, don't get me wrong, I think it's a fantastic card, but it really did make me challenge my brain on how I was going to do this, because do you want to just go down one side and ignore the other side? So do you just want to do something continuously on Populate and try and do a Soul Tie token deck? Or do you want to do a Soul Tie Proliferate deck? And I kind of decided to go down a bit of both with one main theme. And yeah, this is what the deck looks like today anyway. So um, we'll start at the beginning. I'm keeping the monetary values in. It's sitting at $376 at the moment, which is a little bit pricey. But I think you'll see some of the cards you can drop out as you go through the deck. But we'll start at the beginning. So we've got only 16 creatures. Pollen Bright Dried. Uh, populate or plus one plus one counter so it feeds both sides of this um, scheming aspirant feeds the proliferate sides so we everyone loses two we gain two thrumming bird proliferation a evolution sage proliferation on landfall flux trandler cast something that's not a creature proliferate sailor of means gives us treasure tokens to help us cast stuff quickly trove tracker um, draws cards when it dies. I will point out that most of the creatures are pirates, just so we're clear. So I figured someone had to crew the ship. Just it's worth mentioning that now. I think uh, this one's also got encore, so you can pay seven when it's been killed off, get a copy of it back, possibly three times, attack your opponents again, draw three cards, two cards, one card, whatever. Adrex and Nev Twin Casters gives away a doubling up on our tokens. Azure Fleet Admiral makes us a monarch when it comes into play. Azuri, Stalker of the Spheres, 7 mana, because you do want to pay the extra 3 to do the double proliferation and then draw 2 cards. That's 7 mana for, I think it becomes a 3-3 three, three for 7 mana for those and those extra abilities, probably makes it worthwhile. Hostage Taker, go and nick something, cast it, have that creature yourself, or artifact. Merchant Raiders, taps things down, kind of, can we call it stun 1, put a stun counter on something? Mm, yeah, it would be a stun counter, but whatever. Tap them down, they don't untap in the next untap step, fine. Oh, well, this one's even better because they don't untap as long as you control the Merchant Raiders, so I've misread that card entirely. It's even better than I thought it was. Hey, hum. Prosperous Pirates give us double artifacts um, to sacrifice in the treasure form. Rolesk Apex Predator, you get to put a couple of plus one, plus one counters on another target creature, and then when it dies, you don't pull proliferate. Which is nice. Two backup win conditions. Gruff Triplets, because I'm playing a green deck and I'm a bit in love with Gruff Triplets at the moment. And Rampaging Baloths. Upside is, both Gruff Triplets and Rampaging Baloths gives you nice top targets to populate with when you can remove counters from things. And considering the next 21 cards come with counters, you'll probably see where I'm going with this deck. It is mainly a Saltai Planeswalker deck. And these are the Planeswalkers I picked. Oko, I'm not going to talk about all of them because I think people know them all now. Oko, Thief of the Crowns is still around. Garrick, Wildspeaker, untaps our land and gives us populate targets as well as proliferation targets. I think Kato is worth mentioning. Um, you can bounce a creature when you deal some damage and do the two act activate the loyalty abilities of Kato twice, which can be useful. Um, the plus one up to one target creature can't attack and block until the next turn is probably going to the one we use you most. And draw a card is even nicer. The minus two may come into play if you need to do something to populate, so bear that in mind. Liliana Walk of the Day does the whole discarding thing, and then you get to nick things when you get to the minus seven point. 
Nissa of the Shadow Bows, Land 4, Loyalty, uh, lands become 3-3 three, three Elementals for Haste and Menace. Does make a mockery of some people trying to block you all the time. Ashiok Nightmare Muse gives us a nice 2-3 Nightmare Creature token, and which then helps exile opponents top three card, top two cards, sorry, of their libraries. Um, and then they get to return, you can return target on land permits for notice hand, and they exile a card, and then you may cast three of the Face up exiled cards for minus seven. You can do the plus one a lot of the time and just have those blockers around which upset people. The Wicked Manipulator version of Asiok from Wilds Veil Drain does the whole look, get one into exile and the other in your hand, which is what we're going to do most of the time. Um, though that's probably going to be the second time because the first time you activate it, you can do the minus two and get two one one black nightmare creature tokens with at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if a card was put into exile this turn, minus put plus one plus one counter on each creature. Oh, those creatures anyway. So yeah, I'm going to ignore the minus seven. It's hardly ever going to happen. Garrick Primal Hunter gives a populate target most of the time. Card draw and then even bigger populate targets. Liliana populate targets. A little bit of reanimation and a way of blowing the board up if we need to. Love the Spider Queen gets the whole draw a card, lose a life get a couple of spiders um, when they die you get to put loyalty counters on Loth. Minus eight is quite interesting. Whenever an opponent is dealt damage by one or more creatures you control, if that player lost less than eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the distant difference. So that's quite nice. Yeah, it kind of follows D and D thing. You know the story if you've read any of the um, R.A. Salvatore books. Obnixilus of the Black Oath um, gives us a five-five demon and then does a whole you lose a life, I gain all the life that's been lost. Tamio Clopeter Sage, just another way of tapping down things so they don't untap. Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim, draw a card, get a thing to populate with, or do something really weird if you can give it the minus 12 off. Um, target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns to their hand, then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into their library. You're never going to get to minus 12, no chance. <sighs> Tevish, Samat, Fool, Doom of Fools, um, Thrall Tokens, Card Draw, Nick all the Commanders at minus 10. Renin 7, Land Sorting Out, Big Creatures, Bouncing Everything, no maximum, Returning Everything from Your Graveyard to Your Hand, that's a permanent, and um, no maximum hand size, even better. Ashiok, Sculptor of Fears, I think people forget about this one. Um, as there was a time when Wizards used to produce these nice little decks that you could buy when a new set came out, and they always had a different Planeswalker or a variation of a Planeswalker in them. Ashiok Sculptor of Fears is one of the cards from that era. Um, this one's quite nice. Four mana, six mana, four loyalty Planeswalker, not great, but plus two draw a card. Then each player mills the top two cards of their library, so that's quite nice. Minus five, you get to nick a creature from any graveyard and put it into plans of your control. And minus 11, gain control of all creatures target opponent controls. Yeah, right then, I'll cover that. Professor Onyx from Strixhaven, you will remember what this does. It was in standard for quite a while. Teferi Temporal Arch Mage is a nice way of getting us a chance to untap Xavier when we need to, so we can do the proliferate, proliferate, or the populate, populate, depending on what we're doing. Um, the Vraska's Betrayal Sting, uh, yeah, I just want to play another one of Vraska's, but the original Vraska from Ixalan is here, um, who pops out pirate tokens quite happily for quite a while for a lot of people. Final creature, final planeswalker, sorry, Garrick Apex Predator. Blow up another planeswalker, get a beast, destroy a creature, gain some life, or minus eight, give someone an emblem, which means they die very quickly after being given the minus eight emblem. Spells, not many. Thirsting roots to go and proliferate or find the land we need. Awaken the woods to give us a whole load of things we can populate and some mana ramp. Druid's divivalence, um, prevent us from dying for a turn, and then we populate, which is quite cool. Spellmental Augury, go and look at the top three cards of our library, grab one, proliferate, put the others on the bottom. Rampant Grove, three visits, go and fetches of the lands we're missing. Um, three visits will undoubtedly go after the Triome, just so we're clear. Arcogenesis, another way of preventing us taking any damage, and then having a whole load of spiders to come into play that will then hopefully kill some of the creatures attacking us. Hmm. Steady Progress, proliferating a bit of a card draw. Um, Take World Scurring, we can tap three creatures we control with flying in addition to paying its other costs. Let's have it do as flash. We haven't got anything else that flies. What are they going on about? Um, destroy all creatures. Create three 1-1 one, one Black Fairy Rogue creature tokens with flying. This is nice. And then Blood Money over here to blow the board up and get a whole load of treasure tokens when we need it. 
I move over on the screen. Um, ramp, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, one of each of the medallions, Chromatic Lantern, that's our ramp taken care of, all eight pieces of it. And then Ikamoon Gauntlet um, gives all our planeswalkers two extra abilities, one of which is Proliferate um, for zero, sorry. And the other one is minus 12, take an extra turn after this one. Yeah, okay then. Because we are playing so many planeswalkers, we've got the three oaths of the respective colours in here Oath of Nyssa, Oath of Jace, Oath of Liliana. They all help quite a bit in this deck. Um, Hadana's Climb. I mean, I can get it to come up. There we go. No, come on. Don't, don't do, do, do. Oh, good. There you go. Um, enchantment, legendary, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. When that creature's got three or more plus one, plus one counters on it, flip it into the wing temple. And you get a gland that taps for mana of any color. And it does one green and blue. Tap it. Target creature you control gets flying and gets plus X, plus X until the end of turn works as its power. The other few enchantments, it is basically a Sultani, um, Sultai Planeswalker deck, so doubling seasons here. And that's then backed up by Shark Typhoon, so we get some more creatures that we can populate if we need to. The lands, blue, green, and black lands all the way through. Um, there's one or two I want to point out. Khan's Bastion, because it gives us a way of proliferating if we need to, using mana that we may have lying around doing nothing. And I think it's worth pointing out, um, No Jivai, Heart of Progress is also here. You're creating a lot of tokens off your Planeswalkers. Um, so the chances are you will have the ability to have a blue and a green kicking around and make all those tokens bigger on the turn they come into play. Um, sorry having a bit of a yawning session over these videos this week i apologize um so it's worth picking this up the other thing i will point out i am playing restless fine stalk in here because i quite like this land from the wilds of old rain um yeah make another creature base parent after three three until the end turn can be nice and having the five five blue land creature um blue green land creature with trample is even nicer so yeah, bear in mind they are there um but that's it. That's it for this deck for today for Xavier Sal Infested Captain. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with another deck tech. I hope you've hit the subscribe button. I hope you're going to help me out and stick around. I'm sitting at 273 subs here on the YouTube channel. Really hoping I can get somewhere. Well, hopefully. And I'm being very hopeful. I know this because it slowed down a lot. I'm hoping I can hit 500 by the end of the year. So we'll see. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another Deck Tech. Take care. See you soon. Bye.